these line items, which are the income statement side, are assigned to the customers. That's why it breaks out the income statement properly, I believe, and not the checking account. Save it and close it, and then run it to the right. Running, and so, so you can see here, it didn't break out the cash account like it has been breaking out nicely the AR accounts. So if I go to the tab to the right, run it, then now we've got our another uh, sub account here on 512. So it can get kind of an extensive sheet here, but you can see it works. You know, it does its it does its thing quite nicely in a in a job kind of system. So I can break out my income statement by customer, although it gets a little bit tedious, a little bit redundant because you have this concept of the customer and then the sub customers and then the total. So you so. I mean, you have basically two extra columns here. I mean, it, it, sometimes it'd be kind of nice to just run the report by just the jobs <laughs> to see the open jobs and not having these two redundant columns, which can make your report really long. If you were using class tracking, then you can you can do it that way, right? You could sort it by, by job and it, it's a little bit shorter of a report. Then you got customer two, which has the sub customer, sub customer and the total for uh, customer number two and then the total income statement so one of the primary things that is nice here is that you can run this report that has all of the uh, customers in it and it's got the total so that you can tie everything out to your actual financial statements as opposed to like tags or sometimes when you go into the project reports just the individual reports they just give you the income statement activity by that particular project or job great that's great to zoom in sometimes like that but it's nice to be able to see the the whole everything tied out so you can tie it out to your financials then you can filter this kind of report by going to the customize up top and you can use your filtering options and if you were using other kind of things as well like classes and location tracking then you can filter you can run the report by customer and filter by location and class tracking right that's one one way that you can do it if you don't have location and class tracking then you would most likely filter by customer so if i want to focus in on one customer or one job i can say let's just take a look at that let's take a look at that uh 415 customer only and run it and i didn't do anything for 415 <laughs> apparently Let's run it again. Wrong pick. Don't pick that one. Let's do it for uh, 410. 410, run it. And so there we have it. Now, again, it's a little bit tedious even when you do this because it's the sub customers tied to the job. So you're going to have the customer and then the sub customer. The sub customers tied to the customer, I, I mean. So you got the customer, the sub customer, and then the total, and then the total over here. But that's not too bad to deal with right so now you can you could zoom in to each individual job by filtering to each of those individual jobs so it's a it's a so it's a workable kind of system now now note that the primary thing that happened is after sub customers were in play is the projects so if you go over to the projects then like if you were using sub customers before in another accounting system or jobs before in QuickBooks Desktop or sub customers in QuickBooks Online, and then they added the jobs, then the question is, well, do you want to convert everything over to, I'm sorry, then they added the projects. The question is, do you want to convert everything over to projects? And I mean, if you have a system that's working, maybe it's not worth it, but they, they have some conversion, you know, concepts that you could you can look at to try to convert everything to projects, but it's still kind of a kind of a, uh, a scary task to do but uh, the projects are different they work in a similar fashion so we'll talk more about projects later but you'll see that basically you have your own kind of area that's separate from the customer area that sorts the projects and you've got a little bit more of the sorting tools down here for uh, the projects as opposed to the jobs and then you could run the reports by project so do the projects then make the jobs or sub cost customers obsolete? 
Not necessarily, because because again, you you could imagine that you're using sub customers quite well, and you, and thank you very much. I'm going forward quite well with them. You might keep going with that. The projects also add some features, like sometimes when you're trying to integrate payroll and stuff into the projects, but you might still use the jobs, or you could say, hey, look, I would like to to have a use the projects, but let's say I want to tie them to a job. So now you're going to say, I'm going to make a project that ties to a customer. The project's ties to the customer in a similar way as the, the sub customers or jobs tie to customers, even though it's not in the same window, but you might say, Hey, look, I've got a customer and then I've got the, the sub customer, which has a different billing address to the other customer. So I would like to say, yes, it's tied to customer number one but I wanna make the project tied to the sub customer. So you can see the tiering action you might have, customer number one, then the sub customer, and then you might tie your project for some reasons to the sub customer. So if I, if I make a project, for example, I have to tie it to a customer, instead of actually customer number one, I could tie it to a sub customer, which might be useful for like billing type of purposes. So. But the, obviously the sub customers haven't gone away. They haven't removed the sub customers. They are there in a system where you might need them if you're if you don't have access to to the projects possibly. Even if you have access to the projects, if you're using the sub customers and you're content with the sub customers because that's what you've been using, then the question is, do you want to try to convert all the sub customers to projects, or are you good going forward with the sub customers? And then, of course, you could still use the sub customers in conjunction in some cases with the projects, even if the projects are kind of taking over some of the functionality that the sub customers would have done in the past. So we'll get into projects more in future presentations.